Hi, it's Larry King, and welcome to another edition of Growth Habits, where we talk to achievers and thought leaders about the secrets to personal growth. Today, I'm interviewing Dr. Gabrielle Ettingen, professor of psychology at New York University and the University of Hamburg. Dr. Ettingen is recognized around the world as a leading authority on goal setting and achievement. Gabrielle, welcome. Thank you for having me. How did you get interested in the science of goal setting? And that's a science? That's a science. Tell me. <laughs> I was always interested in hope. I was interested in why people would not give up despite the most dire circumstances. And at first I thought positive thinking is the answer to that. But then we learned from the data that it's not as simple. Don't some people give up? Well, positive thinking about the future is great for exploring the possibilities of the future. It's good for your mood. But when it comes to actually attaining the desired future, then it's a real detriment. I remember that program, uh, The Secret. Remember them? There was a group of people. I used to interview all of them. Oh. Did that work or not work? Well, in your mind, it <laughs> works. But what we really need is actual change, action, so that people can change their lives and take responsibility for their lives. And that's the reason why we thought this is not a good answer positive fantasies and daydreams about the future is not the answer to the question of how people actually are resilient. And then we understood we just need to do a little trick. We need to complement these positive fantasies and daydreams about the future, which are important because they give action the direction and they come from our needs. So we need to take them seriously but we need to complement them with a sound sense of reality. In other words, get off the porch. Exactly. <laughs> get off the porch. See what is standing in your way. What is it in you that stands in the way that you realize your positive future fantasies? What is it your impediment? What stops you, actually? And if you complement these positive daydreams about the future, with these thoughts about what is it in me that stands in the way, that holds me back, that stops me, then people understand, whoops, I need to do something. And they understand how they can surmount that obstacle. A lot of people just say, I wish. Exactly. They say, I wish, <laughs> I wish I had a little house in southern France. I wish, I wish, and they never get to it. There's a difference between a dreamer and a doer. That's exactly it. That's the reason why we always say, you know, this strategy, which we call mental contrasting of the future with the obstacle of reality, is a way to get from dreaming to doing. Ah, now, how do you do that? What is, what is WHOOP? Ah, WHOOP. W-O-O-P, WHOOP. Exactly. WHOOP is a four-step imagery tool. It's a real tool that helps people to understand their wishes, what is really dear to their heart, to prioritize the wishes, and to fulfill the wishes. And it's very simple. If you want to whoop, you need to have five minutes of real quiet and you need to be calm and uninterrupted and slow, slow. And then I would ask you, what is your wish, let's say, for the next four weeks? What do you really want? What would other people say? Not what you think you wish. What is it? Feel it out. What is it that you really want? And you would identify that wish, which needs to be feasible for you, but still a little challenging. And you identify that wish, phrase it in a few words, and make a note in your mind. That's the W. 
And then you would go on and you would say, what would be the best thing, the best outcome, if I fulfilled myself that wish? How would I feel? And you identify that feeling of wish fulfillment. And again, just one feeling. And you phrase it in few words, and you make a note in your mind. And then you imagine that feeling. You let your mind go. And these are exactly the positive fantasies, which we talked about beforehand. You imagine that. And after you imagine that and really experience that good feeling, then you change your gears. And you say, what is it in me that holds me back that I tackle that wish and experience that outcome? What stops me? What is my main inner obstacle? And you identify, you feel out that obstacle. It can be an emotion, anxiety very often, or resentment, or a bad habit, or it can be an irrational belief. Whatever it is, you come up with it. Nobody else can. The person herself is the expert. You can dig a little deeper and say, what is it really that stands in the way? And you identify it, put it in few words, and make a note in your mind. And then you imagine that obstacle occurring. It might feel a little tense. You imagine that. And the nice thing is, then you understand, OK, I want to overcome that. And you understand also how to overcome it. And then you say, what can I do to overcome that obstacle? What can I think? What action can I take? What will be effective? What an action. So now we are W-O-O. -O. Now we need a plan, no? And the plan is an if-then plan, which is discovered by Peter Wellwitzer. And that's very simple. In the context of this mental contrasting, it's if, and now you put in your obstacle, then I will, and now you put in the action or the thought. And that's all. That's You're all. the inventor of whoop. Yes. <laughs> And why does it work? It works because it triggers processes outside of people's awareness. And through these processes, which are non-conscious, we change our behavior. And these processes are cognitive. Future, or the outcome, is linked to the obstacle. And the obstacle is linked to the behavior to overcome obstacle. Also. I recognize the obstacle now. So I recognize that the party on Saturday night is not a fun party. It's the obstacle to doing well on the meeting on Tuesday. And I will get the energy. And you can measure that. This public pressure goes up, energy. And then when you get setbacks, you don't take them personally. You process the information in these setbacks, and you build it into your behavior change. Act of it. Exactly. So these non-conscious processes, they do the trick for you. And they actually lead to automatic, if you want, behavior change. So you program yourself to behave towards wish fulfillment. We're talking all things achievement with Gabrielle Edingen, and we'll have a lot more after the break. I remember the president of the University of Miami made a speech once. I remember years ago, and I still haven't forgotten it. And I think I've thrived off it. He said, stress is good. It's good to have stress because it embodies you. Yes. Do you agree with that? Well, not totally, certainly, <laughs> because if you have prolonged stress, it has um, bad health consequences. But for the moment, to understand the obstacle is crucial to understand the way to wish fulfillment. So often people have been thinking, you know, the positive future and then the way towards realizing the positive future is enough. No, because both can be ideal. You need to have the obstacle and you need to feel the obstacle. You need to have the effective experience of having the obstacle in your way in order to get the energy, in order to find out the problem-solving strategy. What about uh, people, who, people who overeat? People who don't, can't control themselves, temper, 
Yes, this is a good point. Exactly. How can we manage that? Right. So these are automatic processes. Often overeating happens without that we realize. So we, we ate up all this popcorn. And we, how did we eat up the popcorn? And we were just looking television. So suddenly the popcorn is gone. Or temper, these strong impulses. Well, they're really bad habits too. And therefore, the, in order to be looking at these kind of impulsive and automatic phenomena, we need a strategy like WHOOP, which also is based on these automatic processes, so that the automatic processes of WHOOP can conquer the automatic processes of these strong impulses. And that's the reason why very often for, like you say, overeating or strong impulses, the simple, you know, I want to do it, is just not enough. Because we need to have the automatic processes that actually beat the other automatic processes which have been run off often because of bad habits. Do any schools teach WHOOP? Well, we teach it. Um, so WHOOP is not something um, which has a kind of established history like, you know, in clinical psychology where you have decades of, of certain traditions or certain um, like cognitive behavior therapy. But it's not just a theory. It's not a theory. Um, well, not just a theory. It certainly has theory behind it. It has the empirical data behind it and the experimental data and the intervention data. And we are now ready to move out to give it um, out so that people can use it in their daily life. And um, certainly, it's a very, it has the potential of being very short. You can, you can use it and take it in your daily life like a daily companion. You say, okay, I do my whoop and then I will get more clarity on my daily life and I will be more the person who is the agent of change in my life. I'm the architect of my lifespan now. Um, so it is much more practical than the therapies, you know, devised by, by um, big schools. So we would say, okay, WHOOP is a way to emancipate yourself because you can use it for any kind of wish and you are the expert of your life. Everyone is the expert of their lives. So you know better what to put in in terms of content into the structure of WHOOP. And that's the reason why it's often helping professions have a real difficulty to give WHOOP to others because they already know the advice. They know no. what, what is good for that person. No, they don't. Patience. And patience with whooping yourself too because often, you know, you need some time to feel out what is your wish outcome right. obstacle. This course, this show is called Growth Habits. Yes. Can you make whoop a habit? That's a very good point. If you ask me anecdotally, I would say yes, because I developed a whoop routine and I whoop every morning. You can make whoop a habit. Like you make other you know, things which help you a habit. You just need to establish the routine that you whoop, let's say, every morning or every lunch, whatever. As soon as you have a routine, and you whoop, then you will get a lot more clarity during your daily life. How often do you whoop? Every day. Do a lot of people whoop every day? I hope so. I mean, we don't know. We have whoopmylife.org as a website. <laughs> we have the whoop app. We find, for example, that the whoop app is used in countries where we never suspected that they would be used. So. Um, we have translated the WHOOP app and the WHOOP website now into many languages, and WHOOP makes its way out there now. There's a WHOOP app? Yes, there is a WHOOP app. So you get all the instructions of WHOOP on the WHOOP app, and then um, you can go through them whenever um, you have five minutes. When you need to five, have five minutes because somebody lets you wait, or five minutes in the subway, you can use that and go through. You get more clarity. You understand which wishes you want to tackle and how to tackle them. So you could do it anywhere? Anywhere. Anywhere when you have uninterrupted five right. minutes. You can't do your email. You can't do a conversation <laughs> parallel to it. You just need to have five minutes slowness. 
and economist. How did you discover this? I'm a basic researcher. We just discovered, I mean, the journey was easy. We discovered, oops, positive thinking doesn't do the trick. Then we said, OK, how can we give people the energy? We came up with mental contrasting. We saw it doesn't only give the energy, but it gives them also a way to understand their wishes and to achieve their wishes. So the problem-solving qualities um, just are heightened. And, and then we thought, OK, let's try intervention studies. Now, if it works in the, in the lab so well, and if we know all the non-conscious mechanisms from lab studies, then we can give it out to people in intervention studies. We did intervention studies, and when they worked, only then did we do the website. Because we thought, you know, it shouldn't be in scientific journals and just sort of lying dormant there, and then nobody looks at them. Let's get them out. Do many, many people naturally whoop? That's a good question. Actually, no, we know that. Because we measured, in many studies, we measured how they fare with their wishes. And what we find is most of them positively daydream about wish fulfillment, and they don't whoop. Some of them do just rumination about the, the negative, the, the obstacles and the negative reality. And only about, depending on the study, sort of between 10, 15, 20 percent of the people whom we tested do naturally whoop. And then we understood, OK, we need to do intervention studies, and we need to teach it to people, because it's not what we naturally do. It demands cognitive effort. Fascinating. An honor. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this edition of Growth Habits. I'm Larry King, reminding you to go out and whoop your life. Dr. Ettingen, thank you so much. Thank you so much. See you next time. <laughs>